Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will discuss the concept trivariate econometric modeling. So, in the last couple of lectures, we have discussed the entire structure of econometric modeling, that to bivariate econometric modeling, the importance, the model fitness, the reliability, etcetera, we have discussed in details. So, here, so we will go a little bit deep. Okay. So, the when will we talk about econometric modeling or regression modeling, because it is the counterpart of or you can say it is same way we can represent in econometric modeling. So, the starting point is with respect to two variables, but the complexity will be very high or you can say relatively be, uh, very complicated. So, when will we move two variable, variable to three variables or you can say more number of variables. So, now we just like to know how this problem is more complex when we will add an extra variable in this particular system. So, what is the exact system? Then the starting procedure of uh, means uh, the starting of econometric modeling is with respect to two variables. So, uh, with one variable you cannot do anything or we cannot establish any relationship. So, the uh, origin is with respect to two variables, but when we will add one after another variables, then the model you know beautiness will start increasing and in the same times the complexity will start increasing and you, you, will, uh, you will find lots of interesting you know features or you know interesting issues when we will integrate more number of variables in the systems. because in a particular setup, in a particular problem background. So, there are large number of variables which can influence each other. Okay. So, with the two variables, we cannot get a best fitted models until even if you check this, you can say reliability etcetera. So, uh, uh, the model will be you know considered as a best fit or can be used for forecasting or different use when the system is very consistent with the number of variables in the systems. Okay. So, that means, multivariate model is more reliable, <coughs> more uh, practically feasible than the bivariate model. So, bivariate model is just the beginning of this econometric modeling. So, there we start with you know various issues and challenges. So, now we will see what, how is this challenge and how complex this problem, how beauty is this problem when we will add one after another variable in the systems. Some of the problems we cannot uh, detail explain uh, when we are in the bivariate modeling, but when we will start with the trivariate modeling or multivariate modeling that time you know that structure can be explained in a nice way or you can say in a better way. So, we will see here uh, including another variable in the systems. So, how is this entire structure or setup of a econometric modeling? <coughs> but remember here, trivariate means here. So, uh, always you know, uh, independent variable is here only one and more number of independent variables. So, means when we will start with the bivariate modeling, so we have two variables, one is a dependent classification, dependent variable and another is independent variable. That means, your dependent classification and independent, independent classification should be, be you know very essential and it should be most. So, now for uh, bivariate models, uh, then obviously, there are two variables only, one has to be dependent, then uh, other, uh, other side it is uh, another one is a independent one. So, the game is a simple one. But when the <coughs> when we add another variable in the system, then uh, in the typical situation or in this particular framework, so we add more number of independent variables in the system, keeping y remain constant. So that means a uh, whatever in, in in the future couple of lectures. So what we'll see, so we will discuss so many problems, so many issues, keeping one dependent variable with the uh, with net addition of 
independent variables that means one after another uh, variables will add to the system and we will see how is the setup and how is the structure this is one one agenda or one structure of this you know econometric modeling but <coughs> there is there are certain problems where there are multiple number of dependent variables and multiple number of independent variables then we can also uh, integrate each other to get a particular uh, problem solutions so that setup is something different and is more complicated than the simple <coughs> multivariate models where only one dependent with the many independent variables and that particular concept where uh, the number of independent variables are many and number of independent variables are many so it is called as a structural equation modeling so we will touch that structural equation modeling in the later part of this uh, means after so many lectures we will proceed to that particular because that is more complicated than the <coughs> present setup so we will discuss with the one dependent variable with several independent variables what are the structures what are the problems what are the challenges what are the you know um, uh, uh, shortcomings, etc. Then, after discussing all these issues, then we have to introduce or we have to enter to this uh, system where there are number of uh, dependent variables and number of independent variables. So, now we will move to a process where there is always dependent variable, uh, only one single dependent variables, and there are uh, several independent variables. So, let us we will assume that the, uh, the system is in such a way there is only one dependent variable here and there are two independent variables. So, that means this particular system is called as a trivariate econometric modeling. So, what is all about trivariate econometric modeling? Trivariate econometric modeling means uh, it is a econometric system where there are uh, uh, means there is one dependent variable and there are two independent variables. So, that means so, let us take a case here. So, once you will uh, talk about dependent and independent. So, every time uh, whatever concept we will discuss in econometric modeling. So, every time we, we will assume that uh, the y setups y series are dependent series and x setups x series are independent variables. For instance, if it is y series here and x series here. So, within y series we have we have number of variables say y 1, y 2, y 3 like this. Then we have say, a number of variables say x 1, x 2, uh, you know uh, let us say x 3. Okay. So, within y 1 there is a items like y 1 1, y 1 2 like this. Okay. So, similarly for y 2, y 2 1, y 2, y 2 2 like this, then y th y 3, y 3 1, y 3 2 like this. Similarly, for x 1 we will we must have like this x 1 1, x 1 2 continue, then a x 2 1, x 2 2, then up to <coughs> an term, then similarly x 3 1, x 3 2 uh, and so on. So, like this that means, what is my <coughs> my point is here. So, uh, uh, we consider y setup is dependent classification, x setup is independent classification. So, we will see under y system how many variables are there and under x system how many variables are there. So, uh, so in the y system if number of variables are there, we will we will recognize or categorize like y 1, y 2 up to y n. So, every every items will be considered as a separate variables in the system. Similarly, in the case of x, so we will assume that and x number of variables are there and every number we will denote as a x 1, x 2, x 3. These are the variables in numbers. Okay. So, uh, instead of putting o, 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 y 1, y 2, y 3, we can simply write y i and simply we will write uh, x i or x j where i stands from 1 to n then that means n number of variables when y stands from uh, i to k then there are y it, it, uh, dependent variable. So, now we will, is, we will fix a uh, setup here so where there is only one dependent variable. So, if there is one dependent variable then obviously there is no point to classify y 1, y 2, y 3. So, we will uh, simply represent as a y. So, that means trivariate econometry modeling is a system where there is only y, one y. So, y there is no subscript. Okay. So, that means it is a simple uh, you know y representation. So, that means it is one dependent variables at a time. Okay. So, this is one, one setup and y we have to integrate with is several independent. This is dependent variable structure and this is independent variable structure. In this independent variable structures, since it is a trivariate, so we will take two independent variables x 1 and x 2 and uh, corresponding to trivariate when we are discussing bivariate econometric modeling. 
So, bivariate econometric modeling we have dependent classification and we have also independent classification. In that case dependent classification is y and independent classification is x. So, there is no x 1 or x 2 because so, there is only one dependent variable and there is another independent variable. So, that means in dependent classification only one variable and independent classification there is only one variable. So, there is no uh, uh, use of subscript or you can say any uh, any uh, additional uh, you know supporting component. So, that means uh, for bivariate econometric modeling the model will be simple to understand or simple to represent if we just integrate y to x. That means, y is dependent and x is independent, but the system is more inter interesting or more complex in, complex in nature when we will introduce another variable. When we will enter an, a, another uh, independent variable in the system, then obviously, the x, x, x items will be start increasing. So, that means, since there are uh, for tri trivariate econometric modeling, since there are Two, I, two variables at a time. So, obviously, we will categorize or we will represent x 1 and x 2. So, that means, there is a need or the, the, it is essential to use the subscript to define, but we can represent like this. We will take a y is one variable, x is another variable, z is another variable. So, we, we can integrate y with x z where x and z, z are independent variable. But uh, uh, you know, the, instead of putting like that way, so it's better we will put y with respect to x uh, uh, and use subscript. Then this this representation is much easier and much you know simple. For instance, you see the what uh, how I can write all these issues here. So uh, uh, what is the basic framework of modeling? So we have to we have to regress independent variable to dependent variable just like in the case of bivariate econometric modeling we are putting y equal to alpha plus beta x simple. Then obviously, this is mathematical form of the model and we are introducing error term because some of the observation we cannot able to capture because of various regions uh, 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 that we have explained uh, uh, lots of lectures back. So, uh, here what is the point here similarly, we, we have to fit a models first mathematical form of the trivariate econometric modeling then we, we like to introduce the error because some of the variables again we cannot identify properly because of so much complexity or so much problem. So, obviously, there is the introduction of error terms. So, then uh, like you know bivariate setup we like to uh, minimize this error component. Uh, we also do the same thing in the case of trivariate econometric modeling. In the case of trivariate mo econometric modeling, we will, we, we will set up, we will fix a uh, mathematical form of the model and we transfer this mathematical form of the model into statistical form of the model by introducing the error term. Because uh, in this particular system, uh, the starting point is we are assuming that x 1 and x 2 are influencing y, but uh, th that is not sure that only x 1 and x 2 will influence the y. There may be uh, some other variables, uh, there are uh, uh, some other variables which we cannot usually capture can be considered as a a, a in influential factor for this dependent variable. For that reason, it is you know bound to use the error term or introduce the error term. So, now by introducing error term or uh, you can say uh, two variable, two independent variables in this particular system, then you see how is the setup. Okay. So, now uh, let us assume that y, y consists of uh, several items say y 1, y 2 up to y n. Okay. So, this is how the y observations. Okay. So, we assume that y structure is like this, then x 1 is another variables which is structured as x 1 1, x 1 2 up to x 1 n. Okay. So, similarly, we will introduce another variable x 2 is a, 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 a variables where a representation is x 2 1, x 2 2 up to x 2 n. Okay. x 2 n. So, so, the system is a three variables the integration of three variables where uh, y is considered as a dependent variable and x 1 is considered as a independent variable, x 2 is considered as a independent variables. So, that means, it is the integration of two independent variables to dependent variables. So, as a result the structure will be like this, this is y and we have a, a two, a two independent variables, one is called as a x 1 and another is called as a x 2. So, what we like to do, we like to integrate x 1 with x 2. So, this uh, this x, uh, x this process is like this. So, we start uh, uh, like or we like to know how much x 1 influence on y and how much x 2 influence on y. Okay. So, standard procedure as usual. So, we have to fit a regression model. So, by integrating x 1 and x 2 with y. So, that means, uh, uh, we like to know 
what is the influence of x1 on y and what is the influence of x2 on y and what is the overall fitness of the models provided uh, all these assumption or condition or constant should be in our hand. So, what is the actual process here? So, uh, before going to actual process, so we assume that this is the y, y variables dependent classification, these are all independent classification. So, now the simple model of trivariate, mo uh, trivariate econometric modeling is like this. So, this is the initial setup. So, where there are only three variables altogether. So, y is the uh, classification of dependent variable and x 1 and x 2 are the classification of independent variables. So, now if it is see, so, so how will we pro, how will we proceed to fit the data and to get a beauty a best structure within the entire information. Then uh, as usual we will go for estimation process, then again once we will get the estimated model we have to go for the reliability of the models like with respect to parameter uh, uh, significance level and other side we have to go for the overall fitness of the model that is R square and F which we have just now discussed few, um, few uh, means few hours back uh, with respect to this you know bivariate setup. So, now what, uh, what we will uh, what we will do here so we will just you know uh, follow the path of the bivariate uh, uh, econometric modeling then we will little bit you know elaborate the concept so that we can know how is the system or structure in the case of trivariate where there is a two independent variable and one dependent variable. Let us see how is the entire setup. So, what you will do here? So, the system is a trivariate. So, y is the dependent variable and x 1 is the independent variable and x 2 is the another independent variable. So, this uh, so what we will do here? So, let us introduce the supporting terms called as a beta 1 here and we will introduce the term beta 2 here. Okay. So, that means, uh, in the case of in the case of uh, bivariate econometric modeling, in the case of bivariate econometric modeling, so we have y and we have x only. Okay. So, the integration is only 1. So, here we are using the term uh, earlier called beta because only 1, so there is no concept of using subscript. So, here uh, since uh, we are using subscriptive to x variables, so obviously it is the supporting or parameters. So, we have to also use subscript so that the uh, the system will be very consistent or you can say more feasible. So, as a result how how will we proceed with this particular structure? So, we will represent simple like this y equal to sim, uh, you we will call it beta 0 plus summation beta i um, x i i equal to 1 to n let us say this is the usual form uh, usual format of the mathematical form of the model. So, this is the a mathematical form of the model for multivariate analysis, okay. but we are in the process to discuss the trivariate econometric modeling. So, when will we uh, it when we will talk about the trivariate econometric modeling, then we will just add one constant then the model will automatically represent the trivariate issue. So, what is that uh, constant? The constant is here just you write y i equal to 1 and 2 that is all. Okay. So, 1 to 2 that means instead of uh, once uh, thus uh, you put 1 to 2 only. So, then automatically this model will be limited to two variable setup. So, if I will put i equal to 1 to n, so then that means there are n independent variables which can influence the y. So, that particular setup is called as a multivariate multivariate uh, you know econometric modeling. So, we will uh, we'll proceed with that multivariate modeling later stage. But in the meantime, so we will see how is the setup or structure and you know uh, a feasibility of this trivariate system. So, that means with two independent variables and one dependent variable, what, uh, how is the uh, structure. So, now if we will put i equal to 2, then the model will be represented like this y equal to beta 0 plus summation beta i x i i instead of putting i equal to 1 to n, it is better to put i equal to 1 to 2 only. So, it will be automatically indicate that it is a trivariate econometric modeling. So, that means this particular if I, I, I if I will not write this once then it is indication of indication that it is a multivariate econometric modeling. So, m e m. Okay. So, in this particular setup if I will put like this then it is called as a bi uh, sorry a trivariate econometric modeling. Okay. This is called as a trivariate econometric modeling. So, now 
this is in fact in a implicit format that means it is not clear cut how is it the exact setup so we 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 will it will we will introduce in a explicit format so that we can understand the system in a much easier way so what is the explicit format of this type rate molding so we will write like this y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 okay so this is more uh, you know more uh, you know uh, uh, simple than the this one so this is little bit you know uh, confusing in nature so when you are very smart enough or uh, when you are a hardcore statistician or econometrician that times this particular format has a such a beautiness but uh, in the in the beginning it's it should be very neat and clean so that you can understand the particular system so now uh, uh, this is the complete structure of a uh, you know trivariate econ uh, in fact we cannot say that it is a econometric model now because there is no error term. So, the moment you will introduce the error term, then it will be transferred to econometric modeling. So, we what we can call it right now y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 means it is a trivariate mathematical model. Okay. This is simply called as a trivariate mathematical model. Okay. So, in fact, this is also multivariate mathematical model, this is also trivariate mathematical model. So, now this trivariate mathematical model means, so we have uh, we have y one side one part of the problem, so that is dependent and another part of the problem we have two independent variables that is x 1 and x 2. Okay. So, what we will do, we will transfer this mathematical trivariate mathematical form of the model to trivariate economic form of the model. So, what is how we will do that? So, what we will do, we will write y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus and error terms okay plus and error terms so now the system will be represented as a trivariate trivariate econometric model trivariate econometric modeling so this part is called as a explained part and this is called as a unexplained part okay this is called as a unexplained part and this is total part okay so that means like vibrate vibrate structures we like to know what is the influence means x influence on y and what is u influence on y. So, that means what is the explained, explained percentage and what is the unexplained percentage. So, as usual if the explained percentage is much uh, uh, higher than the unexplained person, then obviously the model fitness or model reliability is very high and it can be used for uh, policy use or forecasting. But uh, if uh, otherwise uh, other way around for instance if an unexplained item is substantially higher than the explained percentage then in that case the accuracy of the model will be less so that's why you must be very careful the way you will design or the, the way we will fit so that the the explained percentage will be much higher than the unexplained percent it's not simply much higher it should be absolutely higher than that of unexplained percent for instance, if I will put uh, make a division between explained and unexplained, for instance, if I will take a, a issue like 51 and 49, for instance, that means if the explained, uh, explained percentage is 51 percent and unexplained percentage is 49, just you know uh, simple uh, uh, what we will call simple majority, then in that case the model accuracy may not be perfectly okay. So, the model accuracy will be perfectly okay if we will get explained percentage is just close to Oh, you can say 100, but it should not be 100, even if it is 100, then there is lots of you know uh, issues and uh, uh, complexity will start up, means there are lots of questions uh, coming into the mind, how it can be, uh, means it is possible to get 100 percent, because most of the instance it is it's very exceptional case. So, the model accuracy, model reliability will be much higher, if the explained percentage is substantially higher than the unexplained percent. So, if it is around you know close to ones like you know around 90 percent uh, 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 90 percent uh, interval then obviously, the setup is more accurate and more systematic or you can say more practical more feasible. So, we have to see how uh, how it will be done. So, we uh, first of all we like to know what is the um, econometric analysis behind this trivariate econometric modeling and uh, how will you get the estimated models. So, after getting the estimated models, so we will take examples and we like to uh, 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 get the you know accurate uh, estimated models and then we will go for the reliability part of the model to test the significance of the 
beta parameters and the significance of the overall fitness of the model that is coefficient of determination. But here there are certain interesting problems we will discuss in very nice way that is you know uh, adjusted R square that is the coefficient of determination and the multi coordinate issue because coefficient of determination adjust co adjusted R square is the uh, more uh, the uh, means the feasibility or you can say the beauty is more interesting when we really, uh, enter to the trivariate and multivariate systems. And in fact, uh, multi is the very typical issue we will start here only because in the case of bivariate there is no concept called multi because it is the it is the uh, multi is the issue of you know independent uh, relation independent variables relationships. Since uh, in the bivariate setup, there is only one independent variable. So, the problem of multicollinearity and adjusted R square are you can say totally handicapped uh, so far as the uh, analysis is concerned. So, now the beautiness of these problems can be analyzed in an interesting way. So, when will we introduce another or you can say third variables in the system that to you know the starting point of trivariate econometric modeling. Let us we see how is this setup altogether. So, now uh, in this particular system, so uh, our setup is like this y x 1, y x 1 and x 2. Okay. So, this is uh, y and obviously, there is error terms. Okay. Error terms. So, the integration will be like this. Okay. So, this is how the original setup here. So, now uh, uh, as usual, so here there is a, uh, so uh, to analyze the complete problem. So, we have we have beta 0, we have beta 1 and we have beta 2. These are three supporting parameters through which we have to get the best fitted model. <laughs> we will get the best fitted models or we, we will get the first estimated model, then we will go for testing whether it is best fitted or you can say best structural form. So, uh, before that we have to fit the model in a proper format, so that we can get to know or we can get to test the reliability part of the modeling. So, what we have to do here? So, the structure is all together, the structure is all together here uh, uh, to uh, estimate beta 0, beta 1 and beta 2. You see before we going to trust this you know or estimate this beta 0, beta 1 and beta 2, let me uh, uh, little bit highlight this a uh, uh, trivariate econometric format. So, the uh, 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 we know we have discussed lots of assumption behind this uh, bivariate setup. So, when you will fit a econometric models uh, for the case of uh, either for the case of bivariate or trivariate or multivariate, then the objective behind this particular modeling is to fit a estimated model that to get the estimated parameters and the overall fitness of the models. So, that is how you need to have a, a, a substantial uh, uh, interesting problems and uh, typical theory behind this particular problem and the information through which the model can be used or test or you can say check the validity. Okay. So, now uh, oh, 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 the way we have discussed in the bivariate modeling earlier, so we introduced the technique called as a OLS techniques. Okay. So, there are certain number of techniques available with you through which you can uh, get the estimated models. So, like uh, OLS stands for ordinary least square methods then generalized least square methods, then weighted least square method, then maximum likelihood estimators method. So, like this so many methods are there. So, by using all these techniques, so you will get the estimated models. So, that means, we like to know what is the estimated value of parameters with respect to beta 0, beta 1, beta 2. So, now uh, we, will, we will start with also again here OLS technique, because uh, uh, the other techniques like GLS, WS and MLA, this is more interesting when we will <coughs> when we will face severe problems, then we will highlight all these issues in details, because at a time to, uh, we cannot discuss each technique simultaneously. So, again we will start with the application of OLS technique, then we will get the estimated model, uh, then we will go for the reliability checking. But uh, the thing is that you take you use any technique to get the estimated model. So, obviously your objective must be to fit the model in such a way that that should be best ones. So, even if you apply OLS technique WS, WLS or GLS, still you have to go for reliability check. So, uh, again you have to justify the best, best fitness of the models. So, uh, in fact, WLS and GLS is more interesting, more advanced technique than OLS, still we have to start with the first OLS techniques, then we will see how is the reliability structure and how it can be 
a, a substantially adjusted to get the a, a accurate setup. Okay, so this is how the a, a accurate problem is all about. So now in this trivariate econometric modeling setup, so what you have to do? So we have to inter integrate uh, x1, x2, u with uh, uh, y. So now how you have to do? Oh, so this is how you have to establish the uh, uh, structures. Then we have to start the uh, estimation process. So now. Uh, one of the interesting point is here that when we apply wireless technique, there are standard assumptions uh, we have discussed uh, details in couple of lectures back. So, uh, this one of the standard assumption is that uh, first is uh, error, uh, error terms, uh, uh, error terms should be uh, mean of error terms should be equal to 0, okay. this is one of the standard assumption and second assumption is that uh, covariance of error terms uh, uh, ui upon uj uh, should be equal to Oh, 0 again should be equal to 0 then third covariance of ui and uj uh, should be equal to units that is sigma square u provided i should equal to j here provided i should not be equal to j ok so this is covariance of error terms uh, so there are couple of error terms the moment you will get error terms uh, then uh, uh, let us say uh, uh, we will again categorize various uh, other variables like you know once you have error terms we will call u, u once then we will create u2, u3, u4 like this. So the way we are creating x1, x2, x3 like this. So there are series of error terms again. So the, the game boundary will be expanded accordingly. So we will discuss that game boundary in different context on different situation when we will enter to the multivariate system, multivariate system or you can say uh, more advanced problems, but in the meantime, we will assume that there is a single error term. But for you know standard uh, uh, procedure of OLS technique, just we are highlighting this uh, uh, this uh, you know assumption in a brief. So uh, it will be uh, uh, again expanded properly, or you can say analyze in a structure way when we will go the go to the particular problems. Okay, so this is first uh, standard assumption is the mean of the error term should be exactly equal to zero. Then covariance of error term should be again equal to 0, if not then there is a problem called as a serial correlation or auto correlation, we will discuss in details in later part and if the covariance of u i u j uh, where i equal to j is not constant that is error variant. So, then there is a serious problem, so that is called as a heteroscedacity problem, if it is so unit then it is called as homoscedacity, that means homoscedacity is the good for, good fit for the uh, you know econometric modeling, but heteroscedacity means it is a there is a huge problem problem for um, econometric modeling. So, in fact, we briefly highlighted little bit uh, during the uh, bivariate econometric modeling, but uh, right now we will uh, we will just uh, again highlighting this issue, but the detailed discussion about these problems in the later stage. So, now this is sigma square u i of i not equal to uh, i equal to j, then uh, another assumption we have uh, put that covariance of covariance of u and x should be equal to 0. Okay. So, this is bivariate assumptions. So, that means, uh, when there is a bivariate assumption, uh, bivariate model, so that time there is only one independent variable that 2 x only. So, uh, there is no way to represent x 1 and x 2. Okay. So, but here we are in the trivariate system and that too we are two independent variables in the system. So, obviously, we will represent x 1 and x 2. That means, the standard assumption will be modified accordingly. So, what we will do that? So, that means, covariance of u upon instead of x, we will put x 1. So, it will be equal to 0. Then, another assumption we will, uh, uh, we will add here. So, covariance of uh, u upon x 2 again equal to 0. So, that means, there are uh, this particular th this particular setup and this particular setup should be equal to 0. This particular setup is called as a covariance of u upon x 1 and this set, this particular setup called as a covariance of u upon x 2. Okay, this should be equal to 0 and this should be equal to 0. If that is so, then uh, you know the uh, <coughs> use of uh, OLS technique can be a uh, more practical or more feasible. So, otherwise the system will be inconsistent. Okay, we will we'll discuss details when we will go to this particular uh, particular setup. Okay, so, now what we will do? The standard problem we will discuss is here about this multicolorant issue. That multicolorant issue means the existence of linear relationship between uh, uh, or among <coughs> various independent variables. But here there is no question of various because there are only two independent variables. That means uh, just we like to integrate x1 and x2. So, this particular setup is called as a covariance of x1, x2 or correlation between x1 and x2. So, that means 
covariance of one x1 and x2 should be equal to 0 should be equal to 0 so that means so that means they should be completely independent so uh, uh, u and x1 should be independent u x2 should be independent then x1 and x2 independent so that means whatever variables in the left side a uh, whether it is with respect to independent variables or error terms they should be completely independent they should not have any relationship or you can say covariance or correlations between them so uh, means uh, uh, if there is a such a relationship then you know uh, it will affect the model reliability and uh, i am very sure you will not got uh, you will not receive any best fitted models or you can say it uh, it will affect the reliability part of the models so that uh, that uh, you know assumption or that condition should be uh, you know tested and should be required for this uh, uh, model fitness so these are the standard tricks before we go for the estimation process this is one of the serious problems we can at least detect at the trivariate set, uh, trivariate system so it, it is usually not possible to discuss in the vibrate setup so now covariance of x upon x2 should be equal to 0 then uh, as usual the standard uh, other information must be there's like you know uh, what uh, what we have discussed in the uh, couple of lec lectures back the in the beginning of the vibrate convertible modeling that means uh, uh, since there are three variables in this particular setup y x1 x2 so in all the cases the information should be you know consistent so that means if it is y is consist of 10 then obviously x should be 10 and x1 should be 10 and x2 should be 10 if there is inconsistency between all these variables with respect to their sample size then obviously we cannot go for estimation and you cannot go for uh, uh, getting the estimated model so this must be a very 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 uh, you know requ uh, means urgent requirement for uh, before going to estimate the model so this is most okay so first thing is uh, uh, your in uh, sample information must be very very uniform with respect to each and every variables in the system that means there are three variables in the system so your sample size should be very very consistent with respect to all these three variables so this is another assumption be before going to apply the OLS or you know estimated models uh, now uh, another thing is that so uh, here your sample observation should be consistently high for instance in the case of bivariate uh, with little bit sample you can proceed but here the sample size in fact it should be substantially uh, it should be substantially high for instance for instance uh, since there are three variables in these systems so uh, what we can represent uh, in that particular system is called as uh, or we denote as a items called as a k k represents the number of variables in the system so number of parameters in the system since there are three variables in the system so obviously th there should be three parameters by default it will be coming three uh, three parameters so now here k represents uh, means k indicates three so obviously k equal to three that means there are three variables in the system so obviously n should be substantially greater than two three but in the case of bivariate setup so n should be greater than to 2 because there are two variables in the setup so now here there are three variables in the systems so if <coughs> when uh, if uh, when n stands to uh, stands for sample size then k stands k stands for number of variables in the system then the system will be more consistent or the model uh, model can be fitted so if n is substantially greater than 2 k so that means n should be greater than to k so n should be greater than to k it should not be equal to k even if it is equal then there will be lots of problem <coughs> so that's why i i am not hi highlighting n greater than to k it uh, n greater than equal to k it is better to put n greater than k that to high in numbers so there are actually uh, the uh, accuracy of sample size is very interesting issues uh, for instance uh, for you know simple problems your sample size should not be less than to 30 if it is less than to 30 then uh, you know uh, model reliability is very very in a other way around so it is very difficult to predict something else even if you are getting the uh, uh, you know uh, 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 reliable model also or best fitted models still uh, uh, it cannot be used for forecasting because your sample size is not substantially high the sample size should be substantially high uh, that means n should be greater than to 30 provided 
uh, 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 means it should be in a bivariate structures, but in the trivariate structure it should be substantially again higher. That is the minimum requirement of the sample size before estimation. If that is not the case, then it is very difficult to use this model for forecasting and obviously there will be serious problem on reliability testing. So, n should be substantially greater than 2 k. Okay? Then obviously, the model will be correctly specified because we are using here y equal to beta 0 bit, uh, plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2, but uh, 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 this particular format is uh, in a linear setup, but there may be some nonlinear relationship or there is a some different mathematical form of the models because it may be in a nonlinear setups like you know logarithmic format or you know exponential format or any different shapes like quadratic or you can say cubic, then in that particular structure the uh, game plan will be uh, altogether different. But in the meantime, so we are, uh, we are uh, representing the simple structure or we are assuming that they are linear in nature. Even if they are, they are non-linear in nature, so we can transfer into linear format. That transformation rule we will discuss in details in the later part, not right now. But in the in the in the meantime, we will dis, we will assume that the uh, the association between these two variables with y should be linear in nature. So that means it is linear in parameters. So that means beta zero, beta one, beta two should be uh, linear in parameters. So that is that is also one of the standard assumptions before you go for estimations. Okay. So, now with this basic background, <coughs> so we have to set the, you can say, uh, uh, we have to fit the uh, econometric, trivariate econometric modeling. So, so the trivariate mo modeling setup is y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2, beta 2 x 2 um, uh, plus u. Okay. So, now, uh, uh, you can also what you can do you can use also i h s i uh, stands for or indicates the sample size structures so obviously x2 i uh, so this is x1 in fact x1 i this is x2 i okay so now uh, uh, as usual i have discussed a uh, uh, couple of lectures back that uh, the particular model can be represented uh, represented in three different formats that is to cross sectional modeling and time series modeling and penal data modeling so this particular when uh, when we use the subscript i then it becomes a cross sectional uh, modeling so this particular structure or this particular identification is called as a cross sectional modeling but uh, when i transfer instead uh, transfer uh, i to t then it becomes uh, the representation becomes you can say is a time time uh, time series format or you can say time series modeling then when we introduce both you can say y i t together so with respect to beta 1 x 1 i t like this <coughs> so this is called as a cross sectional modeling so similarly we will write bit y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 uh, x 1 t then beta 2 x 2 t then a, a, u t obviously there is u t. So, here there will be u i. So, this side is called as a time series modeling. So, similarly if we integrate this two then if we represent this situation this is called as a penal data modeling. So, what we will do this is p y y i t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i t plus beta 2 x 2 i t plus u i t obviously this you know when we will go for hardcore penal data modeling then the interse intercept term also uh, all can also vary with respect to uh, uh, sample setup uh, and that too in you know cross sectional observation and time series observations so we will discuss in details when we will go for uh, pure penal data modeling so in the in the meantime there are three ways we will represent the trivariate structure that to cross sectional observation, time series observation and penal data observation. So, now accordingly the, there are three different models which we have represented here in a nice way. Okay. So, now you see here, so how do we go for this particular uh, uh, econometric setup. So, now, so y equal to beta 0, uh, beta 0 uh, then plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2. <coughs> plus u. Okay. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, as usual by a uh, bivariate objectives, so we must have uh, we must have a very strong objective here. So, means similar kind of objectives. So, the, your first objective is to get the uh, estimated model. So, that means this is a econometric model, trivariate econometric model. 
So, now we will transfer this to a estimated models, okay. we will transfer it to estimated model call it y head. So, y head equal to beta 0 heads plus beta 1 heads plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2 but that is all. Okay. So, this is what the estimated uh, trivariate econometric modeling, okay. estimated trivariate econometric modeling. So, we will call it equation number 1 and we will call it equation number 2. So, that means the objective of this particular process means we, we first process is the, we must have a trivariate mathematical form of the models and we like to test that particular model then you transfer the trivariate mathematical model to uh, statistical form of the model. So, that is what we will call it a trivariate econometric modeling. So, then once you have a trivariate econometric modeling setup, so our objective is to transport this particular setup into a particular estimated format. So, that is what we call it y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 and beta 2 head x 2. So, the way we will move oh, equation number 1 and equation number 2, so that is very you can say uh, interesting. So, what is your agenda here? So, we like to know oh, what should be uh, our objective, we like to know what is beta 0 head, what is beta 1 head and what is beta 2 heads. Okay. So, we like to know, so uh, you, you like uh, means we like to our objective should to, uh, our objective must be to get y head. So, y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2. So, that means the way we will move transformation from equation 1 to equation 2. So, it will be uh, by a default or assumption that we are minimizing the error term. So, that means the way we will minimize the error term. So, the equation 1 will turn into equation number 2 that is how we have to apply this OLS technique. So, now the standard idea is it to apply OLS technique first you know you get the error terms. So, okay, what is exactly error term? So, now as usual. <coughs> So, y, uh, y can be represented as a y head plus e, okay, y head plus e. So, that means this is y head exactly it uh, every time whether it is a bivariate format or trivariate format or multivariate format. So, y head is the uh, is summation of or influence of all independent variables together, okay. So, this is the uh, uh, this is otherwise called as a the explained uh, explain percentage, okay and whatever not explained that is represented in the error terms. Okay. So, that means the total total y is typically influenced by the explained item which is represented in y head and another is represented in e format okay. that is error format. So, now you know uh, when we will go for reliability it is also again the same structures total sum square equal to explained sum square and re re residual sum square. So, by the way you will get again y head square uh, y summation y square equal to summation y head square and summation e square. Uh, uh, in fact, the, uh, the uh, you know formula and the uh, derivation is a little bit complex and something different than the bivariate setup, but the structure or you, or you can say steps are more or less same. So, now what you will to do? So, the uh, y uh, the total percentage uh, or total variation y is influenced by the explained variance explained percentage and unexplained percentage. So, now so we get to know what is e. So, e is the difference between e is the difference between y minus y head e is the difference between y minus y head. So, that means uh, uh, what, uh, what is uh, what is uh, what is y head here? So, y head is here is represented beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2. So, what we have to do? We will just represent here. So, y minus instead of writing y minus y head, we can write y minus beta 0 heads plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2, okay, beta 2 head x 2, okay, put it here bracket. Okay. So, this is what we call it. E. So, E is defined as the difference between y minus the sum total of beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, when in the case of bivariate setup, <coughs> uh, we use the parameters called alpha and beta. Okay. Since there is only one x, we are using beta intercept. Uh, but uh, you can start with like you know beta 0 and uh, beta 1 x 1. So, it can be possible, but you know uh, since there is only one variables in that particular setup. 
So, we are not introducing extra interset term. So, that is why we are representing simple x. So, since we are using simple x, so that is why we are introducing the beta concept only. And in, in on the contrary, for intercept we are using another constant called as a alpha hats. But the game is a very interesting more um, more even eye catching uh, when we will go for trivariate modeling. So, in the case of trivariate modeling, we are not using any separate, uh, we are not using different parameters altogether. Because the moment we will use different parameters altogether, the there may be some understanding problems for beginners, and in the same times and there may be lots of confusions and you know the model beautiness will also get affected here uh, here the, uh, the model beautiness will be interesting and uh, once you will set the system with respect to only beta so since we have two variables x1 and x2 so we are introducing beta 1 there and for x2 we are introducing beta 2 so obviously we can start with the, the concept called as a beta 0 that is the supporting component so, beta, beta 0 is the supporting domain that is the interceptor and you know yeah, the beta 1 is the supporting component of x 1 and beta 2 is the supporting component of x 2 right. So, now, uh, so now the process of integration, so we will get the error term which is the difference between the true value y minus the estimated value y head. So, uh, by default uh, the error term is nothing but y minus if I will simplify further then E equal to y minus beta 0 heads minus beta 1 head x 1 minus beta 2 head x 2. Okay. So, this is how the entire system altogether. Okay, altogether. So, what is our objective here? What is our objective? As usual in the vibrate structure, we have two strong objectives. Okay. What is these two strong objectives? Let me highlight here once again. So, E equal to here y minus beta 0 heads minus beta 1 uh, head x 1 minus beta 2 head x 2. Okay. So, now our objective is to get the beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 heads. So, how do we go for that? So, now uh, since our objective is to get the all the parameters that is with respect to beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 head. So, we like to minimize the error sum square. So, as usual the bivariate setup. So, what we will do? So, we like to know what is the error sum squares. Then we have to apply the OLS techniques to minimize that error sum squares. Okay. So, what is the error sum squares? The error sum square will be represented as a summation E squares. Obviously, I is there. So, I equal to 1 to n and is equal to summation y minus beta 0 head minus beta 1 head x 1 minus beta 2 head x 2. So, obviously, it will be squares. So, i equal to 1 to n here and uh, obviously, this is x 1 i, this is x 2 i and this is y i. This is the, this is the comp, you know starting procedure of estimation. So, that means, we have to apply here OLS techniques that is ordinary least square methods, ordinary, ordinary least square methods standard ordinary least square methods to minimize this error sum. So, again we have to go for optimization technique, we have to go for optimization uh, technique because here uh, since we like to minimize the error sum, then obviously we have to go for minimization principle. By standard format, again we have to follow the necessary condition and sufficient condition, but we have to see how we have to minimize the system. So, that means, here the minimization system is with respect to beta 0 head, beta 1 head, beta 2 head. So, the way you will minimize, so we have to differentiate with respect to summation e square with respect to beta 0 head, summation e square with beta 2 head, beta 1 head and summation e square with beta 2 heads. Then all together we will simplify, then we will all together get a system uh, simultaneous equation systems where there are three equations with respect to three variables. So, that means, if we will solve this particular three equation which is derived from this OLS technique from this standard error sum squares. So, we will get the estimated value of beta 0 head, estimated value of beta 1 head and estimated value of beta 2 heads. So, now all these details we will discuss in uh, details that is in the next class in the timing it is not possible to discuss we will start and within few to one minute we cannot finish this job. So, uh, we will conclude this session today here. So, we will discuss detail this session in the next class. Thank you very much have a nice day.